Can you really retire financially at the age of 25 or below? Yes. Answer is 100% yes because today I'm sitting with a guy. He's he just graduated undergrad six months ago and now already financially retired. So you have to hear his story if you are looking for a financial retirement. Marco, welcome to my show, man. Thank you so much for having me, Aditya. Yeah, I'm excited to hear your full story because yeah, I'm, sure. I'm pretty sure this is gonna encourage a lot of young people, you know, to take some big actions. That'd be amazing. Yeah? Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. Awesome, so can you tell us a little bit about you, you know, who you are, where you come from, how did you land it in Windsor? Yeah, so uh, my name is Marco Agova. I'm a real estate investor and shortly a uh, real estate agent here in Windsor, Ontario as well. Uh, one exam to go and uh, we'll be selling some real estate here. Um, so how I got started in investing, um, I was really young, about the age of 17, my first year of university. Uh, I actually took $1,200, the remainder of my OSAP, which is the student loan in first semester. And I rolled that into a stock investment fund. Um, I chose value investing was kind of the framework of how I did it, um, but I grew that fund to a little bit under six figures uh, by the time I graduated university, used most of it to pay off the student loans. That's kind of the deal you make when, when you take money from the government. Um, but after that, I took the remainder and I invested into my first deal in Windsor, um, did pretty well in that deal as well. And then uh, now we'll we're definitely here. get yeah. more into the numbers of Windsor deals. Yeah. But that's crazy so as um, the guidance counselor was actually telling us about how OSAP works when I was about 16 years old mm -hmm. uh, and he told us that we didn't have to pay it back until we graduated um, so I asked him right there on the spot I was like wait so I can invest that and, and make money and pay off my student loans <laughs> he looked at me like I was pretty crazy but uh, we did it and, and it worked out well so I'm happy I did it awesome so okay let me just you know make the story into pieces and yeah. figure out so you invested money into stocks mm -hmm. And then how much did you made on stocks? Yeah, so I took the fund from about $1,250 is, is what I started with when I was 17. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the time I exited, it was just under six figures. So a little under 100,000. Okay. Um, a lot of it went to paying off student loans. Fortunately, school does cost money. <laughs> um, and then the remainder of that I took and rolled it over to my first deal here in Windsor, okay. Ontario. So now you got with how much? Uh, can you, if you don't mind, can you share how much you were left with? Yeah, so after paying off student loans, I was really left with about 50, a little bit over 50, maybe around $60,000. Okay, yeah. so um, how did you know about real, like Windsor? Because you, you did your graduation in Kitchener, right? Yes. So how did you hear about Windsor and why you chose Windsor? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I'm a value investor. That's how I've done my stock portfolio as well. Um, I knew I wanted to do student housing because in Waterloo, student housing was very prevalent. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked student housing property management for about five years while I was there to learn the ins and outs of the business. Mm -hmm. I did the math and being a value investor, investing somewhere like Windsor or sorry, like Waterloo or Toronto or Hamilton, mm -hmm. the math just really didn't make much sense. Um, so I stumbled across Windsor when I was 17 as well, about 2013. Wow. And Aditya, let me tell you, the, the, the prices in 2013 were <laughs> significantly lower than they are today. Yeah. Um, but I did the math from then. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough money to invest in Windsor yet. So the plan was make the money through stocks, which mm -hmm. is what I did. And as soon as I had enough to roll it over into Windsor, I did that. Um, so for a long time, I've been been following, following the market. Yeah, since 2013. So um, you purchased your first property. When was that? Yeah, so I first my my first property was eight months ago, believe it or not. Um, so, so it's pretty much in in the hot market period. Yeah, yeah. So it was tough to buy. Um, so it, as it is right now as well, it's pretty competitive. But you know, if you work with the right realtors and, mm -hmm. and you can kind of get get a good team in place, you're able to find deals, and, and that's what I did. Yeah, that's awesome. So can you run us through the numbers? Like you know, how much was the purchase price of the property? On the first deal? Yeah. Yeah. Some people might get a little mad hearing this, but <laughs> so the first deal I did was a five bedroom house, about 450 meters from the university. Excellent location. I still hold the property today. Um, I actually got it for $160,000, uh, which was pretty ridiculous. So yeah. what happened was it was an investor out of Toronto um, and he didn't really know the Windsor market that well, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, he rented his bedrooms for about 350 a room, which I thought was crazy. Crazy. Um, so the way we structured the deal was it was contingent based off of the previous tenants leaving, right? Mm -hmm. So we got those tenants out. 
Um, it was already done up. I didn't have to do any renos or anything like that. So I pretty much just cleaned it up. My mom helped me uh, clean, <laughs> clean up the place. Thank you, mom. Yeah, thank you, mom. Uh, so we cleaned up the place and I just re-rented it right away in January. And I took the rental income from 350 per room to 550 per room. Wow. Um, so increased the rental income about $1,000 per month. Um, and then about six months later, I refinanced based off of the new numbers. Um, pulled out again, you know, I increased the value from 160 to we reappraised it at 255. Um, so $95,000 increase in the span of about six, six months. That's right. awesome. So hold on here. Yeah. So pretty much you purchased a single family home, yeah. which has five bedrooms mm -hmm. and the rent was pretty low. Extremely low. So yeah. you didn't even do any renovations. Yeah. Didn't even have to. So now the current new rents are 550 per bedroom. Per bedroom. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So how much is your, after your expenses, like, you know, after your mortgage, what's your cash flow on that property? Yeah. So, well, I refinanced it. The cash flow before the refinance was ridiculous. Um, so I refinanced it and the cash flow is still uh, well over $1,500 per month. Um, that's budgeting for repairs and everything. Mm -hmm. um, property taxes, absolutely everything under the sun. Uh, over $1,500 per month is what we take home on that property. Right now. After the refinance. Which, after. When so you think about good. it, it means that I have about like negative $40,000 into the deal. So think about it like this. The bank yeah. pays you $40,000 to take this house as a thank you, and then you get a key $1,500 a month cash flow. That, that's what year. I call Burr strategy. I have made a couple of other uh, yes. videos I'll, I'll put up on the screen so you can l understand more about how mm -hmm. does that work like Burr side, but that's insane. Yeah. So now you made that money out. So mm -hmm. what did you do next? I bought a Maserati. No, uh, so <laughs> I, I took all the money and put it into the next deal, right? Um, so what I did was I actually just recently did a deal very recently, like July mm -hmm. is when we closed on the deal. Okay. A property that I am absolutely in love with, um, 140 meters from the university, one street over, the closest you can be, and two houses from the riverfront. So the location is just unbelievably good. Um, that house we did even better on than I did on the first one, uh, surprisingly. So did, did you want to go? Yeah, with more definitely. So that? what's that better thing? So yeah, well, t tell us what was the purchase price, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So this one I did under a private deal. Um, so I bought it for two sixty one. Mm -hmm. um, so two hundred sixty one thousand. Um, at the time, the the old landlord that had it was making about nineteen thousand dollars per year revenue okay. on this property, right? So this one wasn't as easy as kicking the tenants out and sweeping the floors and re-renting it. Mm -hmm. um, so this one, we did pretty big renovations. And actually, if you take a look at my YouTube channel, uh, just yeah. my name, Marco Agula, I have a video of before the renovations. Um, so now when we're sitting yeah. here, we're, we're done and it's been rented out. Um, but it was pretty, pretty extensive renovation. So mm -hmm. I added one more bedroom on the main floor, making it a four bedroom. Okay. Uh, and then I did a secondary unit on the basement, which was just empty space before pretty much mm -hmm. uh, with also four bedrooms and another kitchen as well. Um, so, so hold on. So when you purchased it, how many bedrooms was it? Yeah. So it was really functioning three bedrooms and I think they had one person in, in the basement as well in one of the rooms. Okay. Um, but so it really it's just the three room. bedrooms. That's all. Yeah. Really three bedrooms. Plus let's say it had a bedroom in the basement, but it, it wasn't functioning very well. Okay. It wasn't looking. So now you, you converted into how many bedrooms? Yeah. So four downstairs and four on the main floor. Um, so eight bedrooms total. Uh, Holy cow. So yeah. you converted into an eight bedroom. Free. Yeah. So it's pretty much like just the three bedrooms plus basement now how did you do that man? yeah so in, in student living the name of the game is bedrooms right so think about it like this if you were to buy a multi-family investment mm -hmm. and you could add units would you do it yeah of course you would right so you're renting per bedroom with student housing so you want to add as many bedrooms as possible yeah um, the, the main thing that you're gonna run into those don't add too many bedrooms for one kitchen yeah. because then you're gonna have an issue you can't have an eight bedroom with one kitchen I know some people do yeah. but that's not really my style. So I do it as two separate units, really, as a secondary unit, right? So they have their own kitchen in the basement mm -hmm. unit, four bedrooms, four bedrooms up top. Tons of work, took about a month of 100 hour weeks to do it, um, but we did the renovations really, really cheaply uh, and it so worked out quite well. You said renovations cheaply. Yes. What do you mean cheap. by that? So now you purchased for 260. Yeah. How much was your renovation cost? Yeah, so the renovations, I, okay, so I bought the deal and did things that you always want to avoid. I changed the roof, shingles, changed the whole HVAC system, water heater, AC, uh, furnace, everything had to be changed. Uh, and even with all of those changes, I kept the mm -hmm. renovations under $25,000. What the heck? Yeah, so, okay. It's pretty absurd. <laughs> including the shingles, including the HVAC. Yeah. 
there itself i can see 10000 yeah exactly no actually just the hvac heating and cooling is 5000 yeah. 6000 yeah. and shingles is like 6 7000 exact 5 and a half is, is what we did it for yeah so you pretty much managed to do add another four to five bedrooms yeah within 20000 yeah and it, the price i'm proud of but the timing that we did it in is what i'm really proud of like that we did that in less than a month and had it fully rented out for september 1st. yeah so for someone who is watching like a new person yeah can they do that absolutely you know? it's called youtube.com <laughs> and whatever you need to learn how to do youtube it right like just like you're doing right now for investing So um, did you do the renovations by yourself? Yeah, well my dad was a huge part of it. So my dad's mm-hmm. a great handyman so he can really do everything. Um and so actually you, you pretty much you brought up the mm-hmm. handyman. When you're beginning out, it's much easier to get one good reliable handyman than mm-hmm. it is hiring a contracting company because you can find a good handyman for $25 per yeah. hour, right? And it's a great way to get started because your renovations aren't that extensive. You're not building multiple units. It's mm-hmm. a great way for newbies to get started and they'll yeah. still be able to keep the cost You know, I love that. Very very low. Yeah. Because if 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 it's the same project, mm-hmm. I if I have to hire someone, I would bet you it won't be anything less than 60 70,000. Yeah, if you're hiring a full-on contractor, but if you buy if you hire a handyman, you can still do yeah. under 35,000. Man, that's a great point. Really it's a, it's a great way to think it. Yeah, unless you're building structures like if you're going to build additional floors or, or do anything like that or get the city involved in things like a, a different unit or something, then you have to get contractors, but if you're doing little renovations like adding mm-hmm. bedrooms, improving kitchens and stuff, find a handyman. So, really one of the common question that I get, especially when it comes to students, mm-hmm. because you said like you fit you added additional bedrooms in the basement yeah. right mm-hmm. so did you get to the city or or what was the requirements yeah so the important thing for the requirements in in the basement and i talk a little bit about it in in my video as well is i'll put the link in the d- d- description yeah so if you're going to have students live in the basement you need to follow certain regulations one of which is going to be the ceiling height um, mm-hmm. so you want 611 ceiling ceiling height so just under 7 foot which we already bought that with it um if you don't you actually can raise the ceiling in the basement or lower the floor as well. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's totally doable. Mm-hmm. Another thing is going to be egress windows at proper size. Um so that's extremely important. And the reason why it's important is for fire safety. Okay? Yeah. So you need to be able to get a body out of there in the case of a fire. Mm-hmm. Um so we actually got the window size and this is all for under the 25,000 renovations as Man, well. That's crazy. Window size is improved from a standard window size that came like this. We made it like a huge box with egress windows that can pop out if there's a fire. and we had a fire inspector in there as well so everything passes code but great point you brought up very important that you follow the guidelines when you're doing a basement renovation like yeah. that main floor much easier you don't really have to worry as much yeah. but basement you want to make sure yeah that's awesome so um to r- wrap the whole story up there so now what's what's its cash flow yeah so the cash flows are pretty exciting on this on this deal um so r- right now the cash flowing the way it's rented out is $3100 per month um so Yeah, it's it's, it's <laughs> Oh my god, 31,000 31 31,000 per yeah. month. Yeah. Then what's the total rent? Yeah, so the total rent right now it's rented for $5,100 per month, which is pretty incredible coming from it be rented for That's crazy. Okay. Hold on. Run down a little bit on per room basis. So how yeah. what's your best room rented for? 675 per month. And that's actually Did you hear that 670? <laughs> That's It's actually in the basement unit as well. So let's talk about how to get higher rent okay. prices. Because when you look on Kijiji and stuff for student living, you're probably going to see mm-hmm. a lot of places 450, yeah. 550, maximum 600. Yeah. So there's things you learn once you do student living for so long that really increases the rent. Mm-hmm. One, for example, I have a maid that comes by weekly. She mm-hmm. cleans the entire units. Not only is that beneficial for the student, but it's beneficial for me as the landlord because yeah. I know that my things are always going to be kept clean. That's right. If anything's wrong, little plumbing issues, maybe leakage, she's going to notice that and let me know. right so yeah. that's a big benefit for me another thing all inclusive rent for students yeah. always all inclusive rent students are busy with school they don't want to think about things make it as easy as possible that's why i also preach fully furnishing it okay yeah. so their bedrooms they have brand new bed frames mattresses and desks i buy the same bed frames mattresses and desks for every single bedroom i have all 13 of my bedrooms right now all the same stuff in there um and another big one is stainless steel appliances I know a lot of people yep. don't want to fork out the money to buy stainless steel, but what's the first thing you see when you walk into a house, right? Kitchen. Is it going to be a white fridge, you know, older style, kind of musty looking, yep. or is it going to be brand new fresh stainless steel appliances? Love that, that wow factor and those little things that stick out to students is what's going to be able to get those rents up. 
Um, so the lowest bedroom is rented for $625 per month, and the highest bedroom is $675 per month, which are all higher for the standards of Windsor, um, but it's totally doable if you know how to tailor, tailor to Man, students. That's awesome, and that's crazy. So you're pretty much making $1,500 there, $3,100 here, so that's why you're financially retired. Yeah. Man, it's, it's, it's more than my software salary <laughs> when I was working full-time. It's nice, it's nice, and the cool thing about it, guys, is like, this is done in eight months, right? Yeah. So th this is done in eight months with relatively little capital. I mean, we're talking fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. So you pretty much started with fifty thousand. Yeah. After paying all the loans and everything, um, so it's it's definitely doable. Like if you're thinking, you know, you're not trying to be the top investor of all time, like I'm trying to be. Uh, if you just want to be able to retire early, have some more freedom, guys. It's a lot easier than you think. Simple. Yep. Not easy, yeah. simpler than you think. But that. again, I'm definitely sure that you spent a lot of time analyzing, learning, and all those things in the background, right? You're right, yeah. So like I said, in 2013, I started researching the Windsor market, and every single day for at least an hour, I'd be on Kijiji looking at all the student houses. What are they renting for? What are they, what are they included? What are they not? What do places look like when they're getting low? And I also noticed when the same ad is reoccurring week by week, why is it not renting out? Yeah. What is it that's turning the students off, right? And I also reply to a lot of ads. I still do this today. <laughs> um, and I ask them, would you negotiate? Would you do this price? And the reason why I do that is because if they're willing to negotiate, I know that it's been on the market for a long time, same as real estate sales, yeah. um, and they're not getting traction. So I know that the price was too high and I shouldn't use yeah. it for my calculations. So, Extensive research done, you have to, if you want to win. Yeah, exactly. I mean, especially if you want to have a financial freedom, because yeah. once you're done, like pretty much after eight months, now you're you're making that monthly returns every month and you yeah. pretty much do how much work you spend on properties now. Yeah, well, the, the coolest part about the project, and we haven't really discussed it, the project's not even done yet. So in 2020 is when we're finishing. So right now I'm actually gonna get into contact with the city here and we're looking at okay. what we're gonna do with the attic space. So Ooh. I have an attic space that has enough height to make it another legal unit, but I'm looking at maybe expanding it with Ooh. some additions to make another four bedroom unit. Um, and once I do that, the net cash flow is actually going to be over $70,000 a year. That's crazy. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, not to deal. We're not even we're not even scratching the surface yet on this one. We still That's have some time to go. And also we're refinancing this property as well. So when we look at it at the end, we already did the calculations on it. We're thinking it's going to refinance at 375, right? Insane. But let's say it refinances only at 350 yeah. instead. I'll still get all my money back that I put into the deal. So again, I got this asset, mm -hmm. the cash flows Right around you know forty thousand dollars per year as it stands right now um, for zero dollars and and I get to keep that for perpetuity. So yeah, that's, that's the beauty of of the burst strategy. That's the beauty of real estate. And you real got estate a right control. You can control everything. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and that's the beauty of Windsor, man. You, if this would be in Kitchener or Toronto, would you be able to do this kind of things? No. Well, maybe in unique projects, just being a value investor. Like I fell in love with Windsor to the point where. I dropped everything and moved here right after I graduated from finance school. Um, dropped everything, My I had a great job as well, uh, and yep. I left it all to come here and do this. Um, especially if you're interested in student housing, guys, trust me, I've done the research in every city. Windsor is where you want to be investing your money. Like, yep. the people haven't caught on yet to the point where the it's cash funny. flows are ridiculous here. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And and good news, guys. If you if you are like you know looking or thinking to get get into uh, Windsor Student Rental, and good news for you is now Marco is getting his license, so he's gonna be in our team now. He's ready to rock and roll. After I graduated from finance school, um, dropped everything. My job, I had a great job as well, uh, and yeah. I left it all to come here and do this. Um, especially if you're interested in student housing, guys. Trust me, I've done the research in every city. Windsor is where you want to be investing your money. Like yeah. the people haven't caught on yet to the point where the it's cash funny. flows are ridiculous here. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And and good news, guys. If you if you are like you know looking or thinking to get get into uh, Windsor Student Rental, and good news for you is now Marco is getting his license, so he's gonna be in our team now. He's ready to rock and roll. So reach out to him you will have his details in the link below Definitely. so Definitely. yeah Awesome, man. That's, uh, I know we can talk uh, on and on. There's a yeah. lot more things, but definitely I want to get you more, you know, uh, 
let, I'll let them catch on your YouTube channel for more content. Yeah, for sure. But this has been crazy, insane topic to hear from a young guy. Now I'm I'm boosted to buy more student <laughs> rental. <laughs> Same with me. Yeah, next deal is coming very soon. So I'll do YouTube videos on the next deal as well. Yeah, we and uh, awesome. If you anyone would be interested to talk to him, always reach out to him. Yeah. And awesome, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you, guys.